I'm hoping I'm live. I just had a connection issue, so I'm just going to wait and see. Oh, hi, Sylvia. I am live. Just give me a thumbs up if I'm live. Because <laughs> I just had a connection issue. So I think I'm here. <laughs> well, I know I'm here. <laughs> I'm just Tuesday, the 16th of February. I'm Izzy Shashinsky, a demonstrator. And I think I may well have connection issues. I can see three people watching, but my video just paused. So I've got a feeling I might have connection issues. So I'm just going to sit here and talk and see how it goes. Hi, I can see I can see I've got four people watching. If somebody can just comment and just say hi, I've got a hi easy from Sylvia. Um I think I've got Sue watching and Mum watching and someone else watching. If someone can just type me a hi, then I know I'm still alive. I've still got a red button that says hi in the top corner. Oh, hello. Good. I'm live. I think I've got some connection issues, so just stick with me. Um, and I will just say good evening and welcome from Izzy Shashinsky, Independent Stamping Up Demonstrator of Izzy's Crafty Bees. So it's Tuesday the 16th of February and I'm here for a second bite of the cherry this evening. It's part two of Welcoming Windows and this is a bundle I've really wanted to share with you. I wanted to share this bundle and these projects as a class actually that I was going to run um, tomorrow via video obviously a virtual class and it was going to have all been posted out with kits and everything ready to run a class tomorrow unfortunately the beginning of the year for January and the very early part of February we've had some issues with shipping which have all been sorted now but that just prevented me from putting the order in and getting the projects done and advertised in enough time. Now, I could have run this class in March, but I've got another bundle that I want to um, use during March, and I've already got the projects sorted and designed for March. So I'm just going to show you the bundle this evening, part two. I already started showing you the bundle at lunchtime. So if you haven't watched my live from lunchtime today, you can catch up on that either on my Facebook channel here or you can actually catch up with that on my YouTube channel because I uploaded the video just after I'd finished at lunchtime. And it was a short video, short session and we made, well I'll show you them when I, when I flip the camera around. Um, so the, in this session I'm going to do a fancy fold and hopefully another card so there's there's quite a few projects that I had planned for this class but before we begin I'm going to start as I always do for my longer lives just by saying some positive messages some things that have made me happy this week. Um, so on Friday last week it was my husband's birthday and we had a really nice day, took a couple of days off work, I took a couple of days off work, we had a fantastic walk in the very cold but really bright sunny weather on Thursday and on his birthday we actually just had a day at home because it was bitterly cold, the temperatures plummeted again and we didn't venture any further than the end of the drive <laughs> and stayed indoors, um, kept warm and we just had a lovely day of cake eating. A shout out to Dottie's Delights who um, made the beautiful cake which I posted a photo of. She's a local cake maker from Retford so any of my local customers want a special cake for a special occasion then give Dottie's Delights a look up on Facebook. I think I put, posted a link when I posted the photo. Um, another thing that's made me incredibly happy was I actually shared um, space with uh, Lorraine Kelly in an international magazine this week. <laughs> Get me? Well, Lorraine Kelly's on the cover of the magazine and inside, when I turned the page, to my delight, one of my photos that I submitted for their photo competition was the winning entry. And it really made my day because I love taking photographs of nature and that particular walk was a very grey, overcast, miserable day and for anybody with their chin up would have just looked around and thought it was grey and dull and what is there to see but being the kind of person that, in, that just looks at nature and takes note of all the little things I got down on my knees and it was a really soggy day and took some photographs 
really close up macro shots of some bright green mosses and bear with me one second because I've now got notifications which I need to switch off apologies for that noise um and I liked I, I was just drawn into the colors of this patch of moss and so I sent off my entry um, with a little bit of a story about how just taking note of nature helps me to stay calm and be mindful and sometimes just noticing the small stuff really helps. So I was delighted that my photo was chosen but I'm equally delighted just at the thought that I might inspire other people whilst out for a walk um, just to notice the small things, just to have a look at the small things and just to keep positive and stay focused. So that was something else that made me really happy. And the third thing that's made me happy was pancake day today. I've just had chocolate orange pancake. So that's chocolate spread and marmalade. Oh my word. Yes, feeling a bit full, but really happy. OK, so let's get on with this evening. I'm just going to pop my notes to one side. I'm going to spin the camera around, so bear with some wibbly wobbly camera action while I just get you sorted. And we'll have a focus on the desk. And get you not only straight, but level as well. Let's have a look. OK, hopefully you can see my desk now. So I'm just taking note of my work area and the amount of desk that we can see. Good. So as always, I'll just do a reminder, quick reminder about where you can find me across these social media platforms. If you're new to watching me, just search on any of these, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter, and just search for at Izzy's Crafty Bees. You can shop with me online direct. If you're not local to me and you want to shop anywhere in the UK, then you can shop at my store, Izzy's Crafty Bees dot stampin up dot net. You can also join my team and I'm going to give you a message at the end of this session about joining my team. If you do shop with me direct and your order is over £25 but less than £150, please use this host code when you are prompted and that will um, enable me to send you a free gift the following month. I'm also on YouTube and you can find the link to my YouTube channel on my Facebook page. So thank you for all of that. That's that message done. So this evening I'm going to share this bundle. It's the Welcoming Window Stamp Set and the Matching Dies, which I started to share with you at lunchtime. And what I wanted to um, do with this for the class that I was going to run tomorrow night was get you prepared for Mother's Day coming up in the UK in March. I'm also always um, acutely aware that not all of my crafting class attendees may have a mum who's still with us. So I like to always make feminine style cards around this time because we all have friends and we all know people who we want to send a little sunshine for on their birthday. And a thank you card is always useful. So I picked this set particularly because of these greetings. And I really love the clever way that the dies that coordinate with the stamp set allow you to actually do some really versatile different style cards. Um, the card I'm going to make this evening is this diorama card. It's just a, an interesting fold. It does stand straight. If I get it on the flat desk. And it folds flat and goes in an envelope, a normal size regular envelope. And it's just a different sort of fold. And I thought it lent itself perfectly to this window frame type style. Also in the stamp set, there's a stamp that you can stamp a window and stamp different shutter types. So it's very versatile. You get a couple of different looks, a stamped look or just the pure die cut um, look for that window. So let's get on and start to make this card and I will be sharing with you all the measurements. So you might want to have a pencil, pen and a notepad ready to go. So I'm going to start off with my stamping up trimmer and scorer and I'm going to cut two pieces of cardstock. You'll notice that the back of the card is one colour and the front of the card I've used white. So I'm actually going to just grab those pieces now and I'm going to just change that shade of blue. For this one I used balmy blue. 
but for the card this evening I'm going to use Seaside Spray. I'll start with a full sheet of A4 so you can see the measurements that I'm going to use. So with my sheet of A4, I'm actually going to cut it down to a regular card blank size, which is 15 centimetres. So I'll cut my piece of cardstock in half by 10 and a half centimetres. A quarter piece of A4 cardstock. So that's the back piece. And I'm now going to make the front piece, which is exactly the same measurements. And I'm going to use white thick cardstock for this one. So exactly the same measurement, 15 centimetres. by 10 and a half centimetres. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score. So I'm going to actually leave my cutting blade up at the top and I'm going to bring in my scoring tool on the trimmer. And I'm going to score down the short side of each edge of the card and I'm going to make two scores. I'm going to make a score at one centimetre, so I'm moving my card edge up to the one centimetre mark there. I'm going to score one centimetre and I'm going to move it along and I'm going to score at two centimetres. And I'm going to flip that round and I'm going to do exactly the same but on the opposite side. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the blue piece, the piece that's going to make the back of my card. One centimetre, two centimetres, flip it all the way around. Two centimetres, so I've now got two score lines. Let's see if the camera can pick that up on each side. As I'm still standing up, I can say hi to Catherine, who's joined us. I'm just going to pop my scoring tool, uh, my um, trimming and scoring tool to one side. Let's have the original card in, in shot so you can see what I'm doing. And it couldn't be easier to assemble this card. As you've probably guessed, I'm actually going to then fold those scores. So I'm going to fold them one towards me and one away one towards me and one away which just forms this neat step and I'm going to do that for the back piece as well so one towards me and one away and one towards me and one away so we've got that neat step and you've guessed how this is going to be assembled ultimately it's going to be assembled like this so you can see that it makes this kind of box type card. Now I'm just going to pop the back of the card to one side and we're going to work on the front. And you can see I've done a little bit of stamping. I've stamped these cute brick effect um, images just to the background. So I'm going to make sure that my white layer is now laying really nice and flat and I could have stamped this actually before I made those creases but I wanted just to show you how I folded the card just so you got an idea of the actual um, construction. So from the stamp set I'm going to take this image here and I'm going to use blocks this evening rather than my stamparatus just for speed for myself I can just stamp straight on I'm going to use um, my stamp and pierce mat just underneath because it's a photopolymer stamp not the red rubber without the so it's a photopolymer without the cushioning so I'm going to give the stamp some cushioning using my uh, stamp and pierce mat and I'm going to grab some ink that will be um, make a nice brickwork effect. Now the colour I used on this card I think was 
crumb cake i'm not sure but that's the color i'm going to grab anyway let's just grab that and i think i might just take a seat for this moment while i do some stamping straightforward stamping technique so tap 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 and then just straight down straight up and i actually liked the way that this when it was folded that the brick went around the fold so i'm going to tap 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 and i'm going to turn the stamp now just to make it look slightly different and i'm going to stamp that over to this side tap 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 and i'm going to turn it again and i'm going to do a stamp up at this side because bear in mind my window frame and shutters are going to take up some of the room as well so i'm going to leave it just at three stamps for the brickwork and now i'm going to show you how i um, made the window the first thing we need to do is actually die cut this window frame and the shutters so i'm just going to pop my stamped piece to one side and I'm going to go into the dies. I'm going to take out the piece that cuts the shutters. And that's one die, but it will cut two pieces. And the window frame itself. And the other pieces I'm going to need, while I've got the die set here, I'm just going to get my magnetic whiteboard rubber. I'm going to take out the little piece that cuts four of those black hinges. Pop them on my magnetic rubber. And I'm going to take the window box piece and I will take um, a flower. I'm actually going to cut the other flower. This one, I stamped this image and used this die. But for this card this evening, I'm going to stamp and cut the other flower image because it's not quite as big and I think it will allow us to see more of that window box underneath. So I'll just pop my dies to one side and I'm going to take a piece of soft suede cardstock and I've got a scrap of black as well. So at the same time, I'm gonna pop them both through the die cutting machine. So I'll just clear a bit of space and I'm going to actually bring in the big die cutting machine this evening so I can use my piece of soft suede and I can cut my shutters and my window frame now the reason I'm actually putting them on at a slight angle is when you put a square piece of die through the rollers through the um, die cutting machine it really takes a big clonk it really makes them um, quite a big clunk so by putting them in on a slight angle now I could line them up on my cardstock and put the whole piece through on a slight angle and it just helps with the rollers and I'm going to just pop my piece of black cardstock on and my little piece my little dies with the hinges and I'm going to run the whole thing through and it's beautifully smooth let's run that all the way through move the machine out of the way let's get all those pieces off there we are these little tiny hinges i'm going to pop right to the back of my workspace so i don't lose them let's look how tiny they are the weenie and let's move all of that out of the way and pop my dies back on my magnetic whiteboard rubber so that I don't lose them so now I've got this frame I've got these other pieces here that have popped out and I thought to myself actually I might save some of these and make a bar of chocolate on a card at some point they could be quite useful and I've got the lovely shutters that I'm holding I'm going to stand up and just make sure this focuses they've also embossed at the same time that lovely wood grain i think they're really sweet and the window frame itself also has that embossing image to it so we're going to use those and i'm going to show you 
how I got the um, the hole right the way through for the window because it took me a little while to puzzle this out so what I did was I just popped it on the card where I wanted it and I took a pencil and I marked out for the inside the top and bottom and I'm going to mark out just the outside as well just lightly in pencil and I will be rubbing that out later and then the next thing I did I've got my really sharp snips and to give me a hole to start off with I'm just going to grab a punch and I'm going to punch myself a hole and you can see that the hole is not bigger than the window frame itself but it'll just give me that starting point so I don't have to stab through the cardstock with my snips and now I can actually cut that aperture quite simply with my snips I'm just going to go down to each corner if anyone's ever done any decorating this is how you wallpaper around a light fitting or a, a light switch or a socket you start with a hole in the middle and you work your way out to the edges so now I'm going to just carefully cut these pieces out and the more you snip out the easier it is just to turn those corners there we go first I thought well maybe I've got a rectangle die somewhere in one of the other die sets then I thought well how can I teach that because not everybody's going to have sets of dies but I'm sure that most of you will have a hole punch even if it's a small hole punch like like a single hole punch you can go in and just nibble away make a little hole and it's a lot easier than piercing a hole um, with your snips to get you started I'm just taking care to stay down that, that line there. It doesn't have to be particularly neat so long as you're within that, that space and so long as your window frame can then stick over the top. So I can see I need to take off, I've been quite cautious, I need to take off a little bit more down those sides and that's no bad thing just to be cautious rather than taking off too much and then not have any window frame. Now of course if you've got a stamping trimmer, a stamping up trimmer, then of course you can put your piece in the trimmer and you can actually line up and then drop the blade where you want it and trim that way. But I just liked um, the whole using my snips for me just felt a little bit more controlled. Oops. Just working really carefully in that corner. I've still got a bit of a wiggle there so I'm going to just check again and see how we're doing. Let me just off a little bit. Yes, I still need to take off a little bit more. And of course, if you're not um happy with fussy cutting then by all means do use your paper trimmer or you could use a very sharp craft knife if you're happy using a craft knife and a ruler 
and a cutting mat. I've never been a fan myself of craft knives. I just don't get on with them. But some people don't get on with scissors the same. So I think it's all a personal preference. No right and no wrong. The only thing that's right or wrong is actually making sure that you don't make the hole too big that you don't leave enough there for the frame to actually stick around now i'm very nearly there i'm just going to take a small amount off this bottom bit here and then i think that we are good to go i'm just going to snip that out in that corner and just shave a wee bit off at the bottom it might seem a bit tedious to you but it's my preference just my preferred way of doing it and I'm happy with that I can still see a tiny bit but I'm not going to take much longer and bore you all rigid now I'm going to take my pencil rubber and just rub out those marks And so, yes, it doesn't look very neat from the front, but once we stick our window frame over the top, that will look fab. It's such a cute set, this. I, um, I've already got lots of other projects in my mind. I'm thinking that this frame would make a really nice box lantern piece um, with a frame in each side. So I'm just going to carefully stick that frame down and I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to just note to self that I only need glue around the outside I don't need any glue on the inside of the frame because we're only sticking this around the outside and just a small amount I've probably got way too much there I'm probably going to have a bit of a, a squidge so let's go and stick that window frame down and again, my favourite multi-purpose liquid glue gives me a bit of wiggle room. Now I can see a bit of window frame round when I'm looking down at that. But to be fair, I'm, I'm just not going to take any more extra time this evening. I'm just aware that you might be shouting, get on with it, Izzy, get on with it. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to stick my shutters to each side of the window and my first temptation was to stick them that way round and then I thought no that wouldn't be how they would be they would be that way round because if they closed at night they would look like that so just take care to make sure that you stick your shutters on as if they've opened okay and you could do um, real opening and closing shutters using these pieces what i would do is i would stick these onto another piece of um cardstock and do a crease line and then i would just stick that piece on and have them slightly ajar so they would that would work as well and that's something that i've got in my mind to do a box with opening shutters so I'm really itchy, you can tell I'm really excited by this whole bundle and I just can't wait to get on and make more cards. But I've chosen to stick these shutters down on this card flat because I wanted the flowers to be the raised element of the card. So I'm just going to again use multi-purpose liquid glue and stick these straight on with a little gap so that my teeny tiny but very effective hinges can bridge that gap. Now, one thing I did do on my original card, which I've not just done on this one, is I gave these shutters a little bit of distressing with some white ink. So that's something else you could work on, is using um, a sponge or a sponge dauber and actually daubing a little bit of ink over your shutters and make them look a bit more rustic, a bit more um, distressed and a bit old looking. Now look at the size of these teeny tiny hinges. So what this calls for is some very careful gluing. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to bring in a glue mat, a silicon glue mat in this instance, and I'm going to lay down my little hinges. Now you probably can't see that with it being black. I'm going to lay down my hinges. I wonder if I could use something else so that you can see it. I'm going to use this piece of um, backing paper for dimensionals so that you can actually see what I'm doing rather than it being on black. Now I've laid them face down and I'm going to use a sponge and I'm going to just give myself a puddle of glue and oops, just with the corner of the sponge I'm just going to make a corner. I'm actually going to use my take your pick tool I think as an extra finger and I'm just going to dab that glue on the back of each one. <laughs> I've got some static or something. There we go. That's quite a useful um, method of gluing anything really tiny. And sometimes we just need additional tools just to help us out. So I'm going to use my take your pick tool again. And this time I'm going to use the putty end as a pick pick up tool. And I just gave that a twist and so the putty should be just coming out of the end. And I'm going to use it as a pick up tool because I didn't put any glue right on the end of that hinge. And I'm going to just be able to use it to help me position it. And I'm going to put that about in the middle of that top pane. And it should just help me to not get quite so gluey. Oh, she said, with any luck. go last one super cute little hinges and they just make all the difference I think now I'm just going to have a stand up and make sure I'm still on air and I've not disconnected I think I'm still live yay I don't know what was going on with my internet early doors it was just in a bit of a weakness a weak moment now I'm going to do some more stamping I'm going to stamp the um, flowers and I will stamp a sentiment I think and I'm going to die cut the window box as well so um, let's stamp those flowers first she said wondering where her piece of white cardstock is here we go I've got a piece of ordinary thickness white cardstock and I'm going to use this image and this image from the stamp set now I'm going to just have a look I'm going to grab a couple of blocks and I'm going to just take care to actually mount the stamps the right way up so um on the sheet that the stamps are actually mounted on we've got these little letters so if actually if I put the stamp onto the sheet correctly so that it actually matches the pattern it was supposed to on the sheet we've got this little tiny arrow I don't know if the camera's picking this up here and it says 2a so if I look at that arrow and that arrow is pointing upwards and I want to place that stamp onto the block that way up and I've got 2B with the arrow pointing up that way so if I transfer that stamp to the block that way up I know now 
that both of those stamps are the right way up and I've taken note to have my um, block B in the circle at the bottom so I know that the stamping up is at the top and the B is at the bottom so B for bottom just it is actually a block B so if I'd have been using a block C it wouldn't have been C for bottom but there you go you know what I mean and I'm just going to grab a couple of ink colours and I'm going to use Old Olive for the foliage and let's have a nice um, bright colour let's go with some Calypso Coral for the flowers and this is two step stamping and it should be and I'll just bring back my stamp and pierce mat again so I've got that cushioning so I should be able to and I'm going to stamp two of these I should be able to line these up pretty easily without using a stamp positioning tool in my case a stamparatus let's have a look move that ink out of the way so bottom of block top of block let's ink that up now I'm upside down well not upside down but I can't get right my head right over the actual cardstock because of the camera so I'm aiming and you can see that the flowers have actually hit those little holes and that's without me being particularly precise and being right over my cardstock or using a stamp positioning tool. And that's the, the beauty of the way that they've been packaged and thought out. So I'm really happy with those. I think perhaps my Calypso Coral ink pad could do with a bit of ink in. It's not that juicy. So I've got two lots of flowers I can cut out. Um, just before I do that, I'm going to use a different sentiment on this one. I'm going to use my sweet friend for this card and I am going to stamp I just want a small block let's have a look I am going to stamp the sending sunshine for a beautiful birthday but I'm going to stamp that on the back of the card so let me just pop that to one side. So I'm going to use um, a black ink because I've got some black in the hinges. So I'll just grab my Memento ink pad. And I'm going to stamp my sweet friend. And I'm going to turn that round. And the reason for that is because I'm going to use a punch. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do is grab a piece of Let me have a look. the Whisper White Thick that I cut down and I think I'm going to put a square on the back of the card. So I'll just pop that to one side so I won't stamp my second sentiment just yet. So I am changing my from my original card. I'm just changing it up slightly, but not too much. And I'm just going to clear some space. And let's bring in my die cutting machine again and I'm just going to run those pieces through. Now it will have to go through twice because I'm going to die cut the flowers and foliage. I'm going to cut two of those and whilst I'm running it through I'm going to grab a scrap. I'm just going to chop a scrap here of um, crumb cake cardstock and I'm going to pop that on the platform with the window box die so who had pancakes for tea and who had pancakes for breakfast today and what fillings did we all have Let's get some chat going while you're all watching. So we had pancakes for tea for our dessert. And we had two pancakes each. And I'm a very traditional girl. I've got a beer book 
and I use the beer row recipe and the beer row recipe just makes two pancakes each hmm. which is lovely and he who must be obeyed had chocolate spread and I had chocolate spread and marmalade chocolate orange lovely okay let's have a look where we're at now so I've now got my card front is coming together I'm going to stick my window box that lovely pretty window box I'm going to stick that on and I'm actually going to stick it on flat because I want to raise up my flowers have them slightly raised on dimensional so let's go ahead and stick that down with some Tombow Oh, please excuse my scratch times. I look like I've had a fight with a cat. I haven't. I've had a fight with a rose bush in the garden. I managed um, to get into the garden for a few hours yesterday afternoon in the sunshine. It was bliss. But I was tackling a rather overgrown part of the garden. I think it might have been a bramble, but there is a, a briar rose out there that's a bit vicious. Either way, it got the better of me. Now I look like I've been mauled by a cat. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just arrange these two flowers. I'm going to arrange them fairly high up, I think, on this window box so we can actually see that it's a window box. And I'm going to obscure the actual um, window pane a little bit more. It's going to obscure... If I pull them together and overlap them, it will just allow us to see those pretty brackets. So I'm going to grab some dimensionals. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to utilise some of this strip that's left. If I could find my snips, it would be marvellous. I think they're here. So I'm going to use some of this edge strip and I'm going to put it straight on top of the window box. Because if the danger is that if I put it behind my flowers... Some of the sticky will be um, through the window pane. So if I just pop that there, we're killing two birds with one stone. We're using up some of our edging strip and we can position that flower quite nicely. We've still got some sticky there. There, and I think that looks right quite pretty we can still see the window box we can still see those pretty brackets and that window looks quite full and lovely now I'm going to use a punch to punch out that sentiment which has got a bit dirty going through there let me just use my pencil rubber it's just a few bits as it's gone through the die cutting machine so I'm going to use this punch which actually cuts quite a big label, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it down to a smaller size. So I'm actually going to put it in to the punch this way round. And I'm sure that I've done this many times before, but just as a reminder, I'm going to take a sticky notepad, one of these thick skinny ones, like a page marker, and I'm going to just pop that that way around and I'm going to just make sure that I get this on camera I'm going to just feed this in from the top so instead of feeding it in the normal way I'm going to feed it in from the top and then just get it nicely lined up if I can Ooh, while I'm at a funny angle And now we're getting better value from our punch because we've now got this much smaller sentiment from a bigger punch. I'm sure that I've shown you that before, but just as a nice reminder. And we can do the same using a coloured piece. So we could actually pop that up with a coloured piece behind. So why don't we do that? Let's use, um, let me just think, let's not use that one. Shall we use the blue, the same colour blue as the background? And if we just actually pinch a hole one, 
and what we can do for the background piece is we can actually cut it down so we can cut it in half and we can layer it up and we can actually trim that to size so we just need to take a bit more off of that and trim that down to size and now we can layer that up so if I pop some glue just behind the sentiment oh I've got this Tombow glue is really not behaving tonight it was a bit naughty at lunchtime, so I'm going to swap it for its neighbour. It's coming out quite fast, so I know that that's going to squidge everywhere. So I'm just going to take my sponge and just sponge a little bit off. And that's the tip I'll give you. It's quite handy to have a little plastic pot with a couple of chunks of sponge in just to use specifically for glue. I don't put them back in the... I've got another box with sponges that I use for ink and I just keep them in that pot. So now I can actually layer up behind my sentiment these two pieces of coloured card that I've trimmed down and that just makes that sentiment pop a little bit from the background. So we're getting there, the card is building up. Do a little bit more now before I stick it together I wanted I said I wanted to pop a layer on the back with that second sentiment so I'm just going to bring back my trimmer which I've buried over here under a load of other stuff and I'm just going to do a very quick measurement of what this back measures now so I think it should be ten and a half by ten and a half it's a nice square so I'm going to cut myself a square and I'm going to go nine by nine just because I know it's square. Just get rid of that. There we go. Clear our workspace. So I know I can stick that on the back there and I can pop that second sentiment on because I felt that I liked the sentiment sending sunshine for a beautiful birthday but see what I did on my original card was I had to separate it out and fussy cut it and then mount it on um, a contrasting coloured card to make it stand out and I just thought for a class that that might be a trick too far so just doing a plain smaller sentiment on the front and then stamping that second sentiment onto the back and I'm still leaving myself enough room to write my greeting to my friend, my sweet friend, who I might send this card to for their birthday. Super, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that, just checking that that ink's dried. I'm going to go ahead and stick that to the back of my card. Now that pot of Tombow's behaving a little bit better. <clears throat> there we are, that's right on the back. And now we can assemble the card. So making sure that that's the right way round. I'm just going to lay that down and I'm going to lay this one on top. Oh, I didn't stick my sentiment on, what am I doing? Let me find myself a dimensional or two. Let's pop that on a dimensional. There we are. Now I'm going to run some glue just down the very outer edge. I'm taking care not to get it on the second part and I'm going to lay the top card onto the top of the bottom card but I'm actually going to stick it while the card is flat so that I know that it will go completely flat to go in the envelope and I'm just going to use my bone folder just to press that down so I know that that's going to be spreading the glue and now when I pop it up I can just give it a bounce and a pop up and it will stand 
and I know it's going to go nice and flat for the envelope. Now, speaking of envelopes, let me grab one and we'll just decorate it because we never like a naked envelope. So I'm just going to use a regular size envelope because it's a regular size card. <clears throat> and what shall we stamp on the envelope? Well, I think we should stamp one of those lovely flowers. So let's bring back in that green ink, old olive for the foliage. And let's stamp, where shall we stamp? I think we might even stamp the front of the envelope, why not? And where's my, oops. I think I put my Calypso Coral back. Now, I just stamped that and I didn't take note of which way round I was doing it. So let's have a look. So it went that way around. So this time I've stamped it the opposite way around. So as so long as I've got my stamping up this way, I know that my two step stamping will work perfectly. There we go. Fabulous. So card number one, card number two, ever so slightly different, um, but pretty. And I just want to show you the final thing so this card will stand like this. How about if we grab one of our, thank you, Sylvia. If we grab one of our battery tea lights, you can see that's flickering. I'm going to turn off one or two of my desk lights here. And if we just prise it open and slide it down, we actually get a flickering tea light in the window. I'm going to turn off both of my desk lights so you can actually see that happening. And I hope that you will agree with me that that's such a cute addition to that card. So just because the card actually has some bounce, we can pop one of those battery flickering tea lights just inside. And that's just such a sweet card. I think it's lovely. It's just something a bit different. So we could send it with one. Just one of those cheap battery operated flickering tea lights. How cute is that? So that goes in that envelope. And how are we doing for time? So I've not been on quite an hour. I'm going to give you the option, if I can find my other card. I've got another card for you somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. Here we go. I've got this card as well. Um, and I did wonder actually about changing this one slightly. I've got an, an option C that I've not done. So... I'm going to just share with you the cards that I made at lunchtime. For those of you who've joined me, who didn't join me at lunchtime, I actually made these two and showed you the stamping and wreath technique. And they were both made using the foliage and flower images from this stamp set. Thanks, Sue. Um, so, yes very simple if you've got a stamp operator she can or stamp positioning tool you can also use um it to stamp wreaths as well so that's a really vers another versatile way of using the stamp set and then i made this card and i actually cased this if you do a search on pinterest for the welcoming windows i'm sure that a card that's very similar to this will pop up and i really liked the look of it just quite simple and elegant and it uses the plant pots as well but another card that i made on sunday well i actually made a couple of cards i think it was sunday or saturday one day of the weekend um was for my best friend Alison's card challenge this week she has a challenge on her Facebook page every week and this week it was get well card so I made this card for Alison's challenge totally different stamp set but I suddenly thought to myself at probably about half past six this evening I could actually replicate this card using these flowers rather than this big stamp and die cut it would just be slightly smaller so I am going to turn it over to you if you're happy to stay on with me for a little while longer I'd like you to choose card A or card B I first want to answer and I will go for it 
card A or card B. Drum roll, please. Card B. Okay, Sylvia, we'll stick with the original. That's super. Sylvia gets it. She was the fastest typer in the West. Oh, Catherine, sorry, too slow. I will come, I'll maybe come on and show you card A on a pop-up, maybe. And I'll, I'll actually use the stamp set. If you're interested in which stamp set I used for this card, it was Bloom and Grow for this one. And I also did an Easter card. <laughs> so maybe I should come back next Tuesday and do those for my lunchtime live. But let's go with this card then. Let's pop our window cards just to one side. And let's have a look at how we did this card. Now I'm not going to do it in the same colour way. I'm going to go with the blue because I've already got half a sheet here. So let's do that and make that into um, a card base. So I've got my half a sheet of A4 and I'm going to score that at ten and a half to make a card base. There we go. And I'm going to need a piece of white. Um, I'm going to actually need a piece of ordinary white, not white thick. So bear with me while I get that because I thought I'd got some of that out. But the beauty of doing these videos direct from my craft room is that everything is to hand. So a piece of white cardstock, ordinary. Oh, for the layer, and I'm going to trim that down to 14. Oh, <laughs> that was me banging the gong. That was my lamp. And I'm going to trim that down to, I think that that might even be 10 rather than 10, then nine and a half. Oh no, nine and a half. Nine and a half. And we're actually going to emboss this layer. If you can see, if the camera picks that up, I've used an embossing folder, which I just don't use enough of. So I'm going to emboss that layer and I'm going to use this layer to do my stamping. And I'm going to use a piece of crumb cake again to cut my window boxes. So quite a nice, easy card. So this is Seaside Spray, which is one of the ink colours for um, 2019 to 2021. So this colour will be retiring um, in May of this year. The end of April actually beginning of May when the new annual catalogue comes out so I'm going to get my embossing folder and the one I'm going to use is let's have a look oh has disappeared where have I put that then oh here it is it's not disappeared at all is this one and I can't remember what it's called, but I'm going to look it up because it's really lovely and I'm sure that you're going to ask me. So embossing folders, it is the Tasteful, no it's not, yes it is, Tasteful Textile, Tasteful Textile embossing folder and it's a 3D embossing folder. So, as you can see, I have given myself a handy hint. Hinge forward, and I need plates one and plate four. So, plate one, the platform, my embossing folder, and I need plate four, which is the thick grey plate with the new um, stamping cut and emboss machine. Of course, if you've got... Um, a different machine like a big shot you will have to follow the um, instructions for a 3d embossing folder now I had somebody ask me a question because we used to sell a blue clear plate for embossing with the 3d 
embossing folders for the big shot and they asked me if plate four works with the big shot and I can tell you that it does so if you haven't got the embossing plate to use with the thicker folders then that's the one that you can order from the current catalog it works perfectly well because I got my big my old big shot out and tried it so now I've got my embossed layer so we're almost there we just need to do some stamping and I'm going to stamp some of these lovely terracotta pots so we've got three different sizes actually in the set and we've also got this fancy jug so let's have a look and see what we can do let's stamp I'm actually going to mount two of the plant pots on one block because they're going to be die cut and I think I might actually have a look at the jug. What do you think? Let's have a look at what the jug looks like. And I'm nearly running out of blocks. Let's see what I can do. Well, we're finished with the brick. So I'm just going to take the brick off of that one and remember to clean it later. And I will stamp the jug. <coughs> Let's go for it. So I'm going to bring back in my stamp and pierce mat. And I think a perfect colour might be um, terracotta tile for the terracotta pots what do you reckon and these are what we would call the distinctive stamps in that they're designed to look um, like they've already got some shading on if you can see the detail so been designed to actually look detailed which is a really nice touch so we're going to die cut those in a minute now we need some flowers from each of them so we've already got our little leaves and we've got another set of leaves in the set so I'm just going to take some other inky stamps off blocks I'm going to use that one. Oh, I didn't take note so I didn't take note of which way up let's go back and do that again so I've got my block letter to the bottom I'm going to look at my acetate sheet and that's telling me that the arrow is up there so if I take that off and put that on the block that way up and I find another block somewhere because I've got some flowers to go with let me have a look Oh, well, we'll just grab this weird block, this long one, and we'll look at the arrow going up just there, and we'll pop that the right way around on the block. So we should be able to line that up nicely. So let's go ahead and do some stamping. Let's stick with green. Let's have a look. Should we go with a brighter green? Shall we go with some granny apple? Go with some nice bright granny apple green for that foliage. Tap, 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 and we'll stamp that that way around. And we might do two of that. One. And let's have one of that one. and what color flowers shall we have well the world's our oyster let's have some yellow for sure we'll go with bumblebee and i think that's the matching flower for that one and even though i'd stamped it previously this might well come out under a very funny colour because I'd stamped it with Calypso Coral and forgot. Oh no, it's yellow, that's fine. And let's go with um, trying to avoid orange because we've got orange pots. So let's go with a pink, let's go with Melon Mambo. And that should be the right way up. Oh, I apologise if my head's just coming into shot. I'm just trying to lean over. Just bring that down a little bit. There we go. Lovely. Nice bright flowers. 
So all we need to do now is die cut those. So if we can move all of my ink pads and move all of my wet stamps out of the way. Clear myself a little bit of space. Let's move all the wet stamps out of danger's way. <clears throat> and I'm bringing in the big machine this evening just because I can fit more dies actually on the platform than the little machine. Although I have to say I'm absolutely loving my mini machine. It sits on my desk so nicely and just really useful. So that's that one. I think that's the right die for that one. And we'll just get the other dies out. So we need plant pot. You're probably not in shot here, but I'm just popping the plant pots on and the jug. And the other flower and then we'll go through a second time and I'll do a window box or two let's have a look I'm just going to chop myself a scrap of crumb cake cardstock I'm just going to see if I can actually move those a bit and fit a window box on this plate as well Here we go. Let's just hope everything stays in place. I'm going carefully because I don't want things to jump. I've got lots of little, and they just have done. I've got lots of little pieces, so I'm just going to go that far. I'm going to come back out because as that went through, everything jumped at the bottom. Oop. Here we go. See, we have a beautiful magnetic plate which we launched and then it's been withdrawn from sale temporarily because there were a couple of issues with it. Unfortunately, because it would be the perfect, perfect tool to be using right now this very minute. I'm just going to put that die back on. Let's go through. We should be fine this time. The piece that made the whole thing jump was actually the window box. And because it jumped, all my little pots got out of kilter. Let's just take those pieces off really quickly. There we go. And I'm going to just run through the machine again with another window box and this final flower. I always feel like I need to apologise for taking your time. <clears throat> so I'm hoping I'm not boring you too rigidly watching me die cut things. So did we have any comments anyway about pancakes? I didn't see them. <laughs> and I suppose the other question that comes after pancakes then is who's giving up what for Lent? And of course I got the annual answer from husband. I'm giving up giving up things. I said, well, what have you given up then? <laughs> It's so cheeky. Here we go. Oh, I've got three window boxes now. So we should be good to start assembling this card. Let me just move these plates out of the way. Lovely. Right, here we go. Take a seat. Here we are. So I've got my base. I've got my embossed layer. I've got all my lovely little bits and pieces. I've got three window boxes. Here we go. 
or three shelves. Maybe this just looks like a florist shop. What do we think? So maybe not window boxes because there are no windows, but maybe it's a florist shop. And let's start sticking it down. Very easy. Now, I will say use wet glue when you've got an embossed layer. And the reason for that is if you to run a tape runner across an embossed layer, you run the risk of flattening that beautiful embossing because you're putting pressure on whilst you're pressing down with your tape runner. So I would say use a wet glue on the back of your embossed layer. And I, I'm always amazed and thrilled when I use an embossing folder and do an embossed layer. And it's something I just forget to do. But just that little bit of texture just makes all the difference because this card has quite a bit of white space and it really makes all the difference. So another thing I want to point out is that if you wanted a long shelf for um, a project so, so let's say you were doing this card this way around and you wanted to lengthen the shelf you could just stick them together and you could chop off this bracket here and then you could cover the join with some artfully positioned flowers so you could actually have a longer shelf if you wanted to um, but I'm going to stick with this orientation and I'm going to position my shelves pretty much how I had them on the original, just sort of slightly offset each one. And I'm going to stick each of the shelves flat because I want to raise up the flowers like I've done with the original. I'm going to stick one about there. I'm going to stick one about there. Oh, put the glue on the right side. That was nearly a schoolgirl error. Let's have one about there. Ordinarily, I think I would sort of lay out the plant pots as well, just to make sure I had enough room, but I'm just eyeballing it this time for the sake of speed and the demonstration. And let's have a look. I've not used this jug before, so where shall we stand the jug? Let's stand it there because we've got enough room. And I think I'll go for the yellow flowers again. I could do them so they look like they're inside. But I think because it's got a handle, I think we'll go there. I think we'll go for the squat pot on the top. Ooh. Oh, it's only just going to fit. You see, I should have dry laid it out, shouldn't I? And we'll go with the bottom pot there. Yep, happy with that. And then we've got plenty of room here for a sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and stick. And we definitely need this squat plant pot at the top to give ourselves enough room for that bunch of flowers. I really love this terracotta jug. It's pretty neat. Let's go. Yeah, let's go there. And we'll just grab some dimensionals. Simple as that. Now this one's going to be the tricky one. So it's not protruding right over the top of the card. I'm going to just play around with angles. Let's have a look. I think that angle's probably going to work the best. There we go. We can just see that um, plant pot underneath. Which way around? Definitely that way around in the jug. And we'll go straight up with this one. Like that, we can just see the lip of the jug. And that way, if we just alter that angle, I 
that one it just makes it look slightly different from the top one I'm quite happy with that and we'll just do a quick sentiment and shall we go with the one that we had before because it should be somewhere or did we take it off oh no we should have sweet friend kicking around somewhere where have you gone sweet friend oh there you are so let's grab our scrap of whisper white which i'm sure we've got somewhere here we are and once again i think i mentioned it last week i'm still using up my whisper white cardstock the new basic white cardstock um has arrived and i've got mine here and I've done a comparison and I must say it won't come across on camera um, because I tried doing a comparison on camera to a friend and she said she just couldn't tell the difference. But in real life, we're used to anybody who's used stamping up Whisper White cardstock for years with me will know it's a beautiful, smooth, really good quality um cardstock and i am absolutely delighted to say that the new basic white is even better and not just saying that it's even better i was really apprehensive because i've loved whisper white it's been the best cardstock i've ever stamped on um and i was really apprehensive to receive the new basic white and it is absolutely smooth and silky and gorgeous it's ever so ever so um bit brighter than whisper white just ever so marginally brighter not enough really to um consider even i'm going to do exactly the same with this punch um but yes i'm absolutely delighted with the quality it's superb really silky smooth beautiful to stamp on um i've just not i've got my packet open i've just not started using it yet i put that on the wrong way around like a ninny that i am um see i'm talking trying to talk and demonstrate at the same time it didn't work at lunchtime if you watched me i got me not in a twist <laughs> here we go oh just need that a bit further down there we go and I'm just going to do the same but this time I think I'm going to use a piece of crumb cake let's have a look I've got some kicking around just off to the one side and we'll just do the same we'll just cut that down And layer it up. I don't know why I'm putting the scrap over there because that goes in the bin. I think I've lost the plot. Yes, yeah, so basic white. If you've not ordered any or you're running out of Whisper White, please fear not. You will be delighted. I ordered the regular thickness. I ordered the thick and I ordered the envelopes and the note cards and envelopes because I really wanted to even though I hadn't run out and I had plenty of Whisper White in stock, um, I wanted to make sure that I liked it. So I'm happy with that sentiment. And I'm going to just pop it like this one. I've popped some twine behind. I'm going to pop maybe a twist of ribbon. What do we think? Let's have a look. So what colour have we used there? We've used that Um, I can't remember what colour I said it was, for goodness sake. Oh, Seaside Spray. I wanted to say something else completely. So I'm going to just try and think about how to put a twist of ribbon underneath. Let's just put a little twist like that. Just enough. We could twist it like this. So that we can see that pretty colour. Or we could just twist it like that. I think we'll just leave it like that. Because it's quite a thick ribbon this. And I don't want the bulk. So I'm going to just shorten that. And I'm going to 
just stick it like that and pop that underneath just for a bit of extra texture extra texture that's lots of things to say right I'm going to use glue dots for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap my ribbon into a position that I'm happy I'm going to pop a glue dot in between to hold it together to hold that how I want it to be held. I'm going to pop a glue dot on top. Oh, here we are, look. To put my sentiment on. And I'm going to use another glue dot to stick the whole thing onto the card. And the reason I'm using glue dots is because they're a nice, strong, dry glue. If I put um, Tombow multi-purpose wet glue on the back the ribbon would just simply soak it up and it wouldn't stick to the card yeah I'm just going to pop that there just for a bit of extra additional texture so this one I just did a loop of um, linen thread just behind just again to give it a little bit of interest and this one I've just used a ribbon so let me just stand up and have a look oh hi Sheena oh so here we go I've got a pancake Catherine had pancakes with defrosted fruit and natural yogurt that sounds absolutely delicious and I could eat that for my breakfast I have frozen blueberries that I stick in my porridge and by the time the porridge is cooked they're defrosted so you joined me a little bit late Sheena don't apologize at all I save all of my live videos on my Facebook page. If you click on the little tab that says videos, you can go back to any of them at any time, just whenever you have time and a cup of tea in your hand. So you're welcome to find my videos and watch them back there anytime you like, my lovely. And um, some of my videos are being migrated over to YouTube. So if you've got YouTube on your telly, if you've got a smart telly, then you can watch me on the big screen um over on youtube not all of my videos are on there for the whole of the last year but um quite a few of them are starting to migrate and if you didn't see me at lunchtime sheena um we made these two i showed you how to make these two cards using the same stamp set but how to get that lovely wreath thank you sylvia and i showed you these two that i've made earlier so i'm just going to lay them out there so they're the cards, they're the note cards I made at lunchtime. And where's my diorama card that I've just made this evening? It's here. So I'm just going to pop that one down as well. And I'm just going to come back to camera. Just move all of those so that I get a nice clean shot of everything. Um, I'm going to come back to camera and just have a final closing message. I'm happy for you to skip off if you've heard it before, but I'm going to give you a closing message about joining my team. And that's for anybody who's joining me later, watching the video later on. So just bear with me with a bit of a wibbly wobbly camera while I spin you back round. And I'll just take a seat. And I'm back in the room. Thank you again for watching me. I think I've got my camera a bit high there. Let me just pull that down a bit. So thank you all again for joining me this evening. And I hope that you've enjoyed making those or watching me make those cards. And I will say, like I said at the top of the video, that I was hoping to offer this as a class in the post to be made tomorrow evening. And because of the difficulties we've had with late deliveries that have all been completely sorted out now, I couldn't order the kits in time for them to be delivered out but if you would like to make these cards with a kit posted to you if you want to drop me a message a direct message or put a comment under this video then I'll get back to you and I'll arrange to um, place an order for the bundle now let me tell you that the bundle is 46 pounds and 75 pence and that includes the stamp set and the fantastic matching dies that you've seen me use this evening you'll also get um, enough kit to make all of the cards that I've shown you so all the bits of cardstock pre-cut and folded to make the cards and you can watch back this video for your instructions once you get your kit 
and if you order before the end of February because it's over £45 you'll also be entitled to pick a free item from the celebration brochure and because your order there's more because your order is over £25 I will also personally send you a free gift next month in the post so that will come out separately um, to your kit um, so great value so you get your kit you get your stamp set your bundle and your die set and you get free kit to be able to make all the cards that you've seen including envelopes and you also get a free celebration item if you place your order before the end of February of course you can actually place your order for the entire life of this catalogue which is to the end of June for the January to June mini catalogue so if you're watching this video after the end of February and you want to make the cards that I've demonstrated then please still contact me with a direct message and I can take your order and I will still send you the free kit to make the cards um, that I've demonstrated now it's the last two weeks of celebration celebration ends on the 28th of February and until the 28th of February there's a fantastic offer if you want to join Stampin' Up. Now I want to have a little word about joining Stampin' Up. You might be a hobby um, crafter so you might not fancy the idea of demonstrating i.e. running classes, going on Facebook live and actually demonstrating the kit. That's perfectly fine. What we say there is you would be classed as a hobby demonstrator or a kit napper, which means you can get the starter kit for um, the same price with this fabulous offer that's on until the end of February. Now, let me tell you what you get. For £99, you get to choose products from any of the catalogues to the value of £130. So it isn't a set starter kit that comes in a box. It's actually made up of any product that you like and love from the catalogues. If you've got a wish list already and you've got £99 available to spend, then for me it's a no-brainer. Join my team, get your starter kit that's made up of items from your wish list to the value of £130. And until the end of February, you'll also get an additional five packs, five packs of designer series paper. They're the six by six size and they're like this, made up of the colour families. So there's one pack per colour family plus, so that's brights, subtles, regals and neutrals, plus one pack of the um, in colour family um colours that isn't going to retire so the in colours that last from 2020 to 2022 is included and the um they're of the new designs the new patterns so that's five packs 40 sheets per pack so that's 200 sheets of designer series paper that's worth 53 pounds and 75 pence on its own and you get that for free until the end of february so for £99, you get £130 worth of your choice, plus an extra £53.75 pence worth of designer series paper, plus free postage and packing. What's not to love? So if you want to be a kit napper and nap that kit, you don't. there's no obligation to do anything other than play with the kit once you've got it. You'd be a hobby demonstrator. I use that word very lightly. You're not obliged to do any demonstrations or any promotions or anything you can just join my team use the kit and then after three months you leave the team seamlessly nobody will even contact you if on the other hand you are an avid crafter and you want to join my team and you want to um, run classes online at the moment because of the pandemic or after the pandemic you want to run in-person classes and demonstrations then Equally, it's the same offer, £99 to join, you get to pick £130 worth of any product from any of the live catalogues, that's the annual and the January to June mini catalogue. Um, you um, also get the free designer series paper that's worth £53.75. Plus, if you tick an extra box that includes the business pack, you will also get um, a pack of catalogues, and some order forms and some business materials to help you get started on your journey to being a live demonstrator 
and if you have any questions at all about becoming a demonstrator and what that means um, then please just give me a call you're welcome to call me on my mobile number or you're welcome to drop me a line um, if you send me a direct message personal direct message and include your phone number I will give you a call at my expense and we can have a no obligation chat about what it all means um, one thing that is absolutely brilliant for the time that you are an active demonstrator whether you're a kidnapper or not you may place orders yourself and you may get 20% discount so it's worth it all round so I'm just um, going to round off with that message I would love to welcome you into my little team of bees in the busy beehive whether you're going to be um, a hobby demonstrator or an avid crafter and an active demonstrator you'll be more than welcome in the hive we have a lot of fun we do do some team activities as well and um, yeah it's all about fun and it's all about crafting so until next week I will be hopping on next week probably just for a lunchtime live I know I've had lots of messages to tell you this week, so please watch back if you've missed anything um, and give me a message if you are confused about anything at all. In the meantime, please stay safe, please stay happy and please keep crafting everyone. Lots of love to you all. Bye for now. Bye.